Support Wrestle Talk. Give us a subscribe. What the hell are WWE doing with Bobby Lashley? I'm Ollie Davis. This is Lou Cohen. Welcome to the Wrestle Ramble Raw Review edition of the week. And just to make sure we did see what we saw, we just watched the Bobby Lashley interview segment again from last night's Raw. We have both been saying for a month since Bobby Lashley came back, Oh, I hope that Bobby gets some meat to his character soon. At the moment, WWE are kind of resting on the laurels of t a decade ago, back when Bobby Lashley was last in the company. Now he's just returned, he's got an impressive physique, an impressive delayed suplex finisher, but beyond that, why should people care about him? Give us a reason to care, WWE! And what do WWE do? They say, OK then, hold my beer. <laughs> and they go and make, honestly, honestly, one of the worst things I've ever seen from a, a just a, just a scripted force feeding getting someone's character not just wrong but actively ruining them it was a sit down interview with Renee Young and Bobby Lashley who I mean at the end of all this he's a dapper man like none of us can deny that he was very smartly dressed I wish I could pull off a flat cap the way he does. That is the only positive thing I will say about this segment. Because then what followed is him going through his three sisters and describing stories from their childhood together. So we've got Kathy, that's the eldest sister, Jessica, that's the second oldest sister, and then Frances, which is the closest to his age. You know, that's why she's daddy, daddy's little girl. And each one of them has a really really rubbish story attached to them based around an object so Kathy's she carried a broom everywhere and she'd chase me with it Bobby said because I was the little one and they'd torment me my sisters and one day I said huh, why don't you just hop on that broom implying she's a witch ha 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 then Jessica she didn't just have a security blanket she had a security towel and boy, she carried it with her everywhere. So that thing stunk. But when the local bully found out and started making fun of her for it, little brother Bobby Lashley shoved it down his throat. I bet that didn't taste too good. That's that's his, that's his That's the scripted thing that he said. You know, I'm, I'm trying to summarise here just so we're all on the same page of how awful this is. He, that's the, oh, yeah, you've got a towel in your throat. I bet that doesn't taste good because <laughs> yep. it's, it's yep. old. Like, hop on that broom. It's... Oh, oh, or, yeah. So it's just not it's not funny. Uh, we, we've got one more to go, yeah. And and then you've got uh then you've got Frances, who is the, the youngest, closest to Bobby's age, and she carried around her father's army hat everywhere, took it to school, took it to I don't know church. Church everywhere. Because th their dad was in the army and, and she was Daddy's little girl. <laughs> <laughs> and then Bobby says McManism. And then Bobby says, Well, you know, I decided to play a bit of a prank on her. You know. Frank, <laughs> he hid it. He hid it in her room. I was going to say he didn't hide it far. He hid it in her own room. Yeah, yeah. And oh, she was angry about that. And you see this scar right here. He points to a part, part of his eye. He says, "Oh, that bit. Oh, that bit hurt. That's why I know never to mess with Francis." What <laughs> the actual f word? No, come on, man. You've I not got to my favorite bit. Okay, of this. okay. My favorite bit of this is Sir Renee Young there politely smiling throughout this nodding away being like every time he told one of these little anecdotes being like that's the most interesting anecdote I've ever heard like that was the that was the face that Renee was pulling and then at the end of it she's like well it sounds like you've had quite the colourful life no it doesn't that is the most <laughs> boring life I've ever heard and then Bobby's like yep you know I've got a really great family but now I have a new extended family they're called the WWE Universe and we're going to have a lot of fun together that was gen and that was word for word, almost like We've written it down, yeah. Almost like the in the uh, the intonations that he spoke those words. It's it's an absolute marvel of a promo. Fun story for you, uh, Russell Talk, Russell Ramble audience. Um, when Ollie came in from doing his uh, raw review, we two obviously I don't I'm not in the same room when he recorded. He was replaying the footage, and I, was, I just heard him do this massive loud swear in the. Uh, and then I was like, oh god, I wonder what he was swearing about. And then you came back in here and said, like, what do you think I was really angry about on this show? What did you think I thought was the worst thing WWE did on this show? And I was like, I mean, setting up a Roman gender feud doesn't exactly sound particularly uh, appetizing. And then I was just trying to play back the show in my head. 
And I was like, no, nope, can't think of anything. Genuinely can't think of anything. And then you said the Bobby Lashley bit. And all of a sudden it popped back to mind. I had completely forgotten this thing happened on the show. What I wouldn't have remembered until we got through it on the notes. But I was like, oh my God, I totally forgot about the Bobby Lashley thing. And then all of it came flooding back to me. And there's the crap stories that he was telling. But I mean, bless him. They're obviously, I mean, actually, no, I'm not going to say bless him. And I was about to say they might be really important stories to him. But they don't sound like they're important stories to him because they were scripted for him to say. They're not real. There's no way these are real. That's the worst thing about this is that it sounded so scripted. There was not one bit of this that sounded genuine or real. I mean, my notes here is like, this wasn't as good as when NXT did it for Roderick Strong. And because the Roddy Strong stuff that they did on NXT, it felt like genuine. It was it was Roddy, like, this is me. I've always been Roddy versus the world. I've always been on my own. But now I've got a family and I'm doing this. Here's, like, all this tragic stuff that happened with my dad. And it felt this really real and raw stuff. And everyone's like, oh, my God, Roddy's a star coming out of this. Which then made his heel turn even more impactful. Because you're like, oh, but I, I now know what Roddy is like as a baby face. And, like, I know what he's like as a real person. This has done absolutely nothing for Bobby Lashley other than make him sound just really scripted and rubbish well that's it it's not just that it's it's scripted because you that the roddy stuff works so well because it isn't just real it's really super interesting and tragic and emotional so you've got like a double hook there this just isn't real it's in no way interesting especially when the show opens with braun Strowman telling a scripted childhood story oh, what was that all about i didn't well? mind that because it ended <laughs> the anecdote ended with braun Strowman killing some children i thought that was hilarious and i loved it so how can you expect me oh i i shoved a towel down a kid's throat because my sister Francis or Jessica, I don't care about your family, Bobby Lashley. And he's a big guy. He's a big guy, but he should have said no. He could, he could have like threatened someone. I'm not going to read this, Tosh. But so you said your favourite bit was, oh, and now I've got an extended, extended family, family and we're going to have a lot of fun it with was the, the WWE the, universe. That was the most scripted line of the whole thing. And it was the corniest crap no, ever. No, no, because the corniest crap came a second later when Rana Young's like, well, you know, thank you very much for sharing. Oh, yeah. she, she's <laughs> wrapping things up. This. We literally just watched it. Sorry. She's wrapping things up. Rana Young, you know, scripted staged wise and Bobby goes Renee 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 can I just say something please and I, okay maybe this is where it's going to get interesting this is where he's going to like start he's going to go Brock Lesnar I'm coming for you bitch yeah, <laughs> it's like a, I really like swerve it that would have made everything worthwhile or maybe I don't even know just like assaulted a camera guy punches Renee Young yeah <laughs> delayed suplexes Renee Young but he doesn't he, get, he goes could he do something <laughs> just just stop right there Renee Young because I've got something I want to say, looks right at the camera with this gormless grin. It is the, the thumbnail for this episode. And he just says, Jessica, Kathy, Francis, I love you. And, and that was it. And um, <laughs> my notes here, Renee thanked him for his interview. And I was like, why is Renee thanking him for the interview? He didn't tell her anything of note. Like... Like the way they pose this, like, Renee is this, like, Michael Parkinson, I'm going to sit down with you, and I'm going to get, like, really detailed and interesting stuff about because he's like, you know, I've got three sisters, and she goes, like, were you close with your sisters? You know, a, a good sort of, like, invasive question to ask someone to try and get them to open up a little bit. And at the end of it, she, she was just like, oh, no, thank you so much for this interview, I can't wait to learn more about you, and I'm like, what did you learn? Honestly, what did we learn here? That most of his anecdotes about childhood are about his sister's and object based. That's another big giveaway. Like it wasn't just it, each story; it centered around a sister and an object. Yeah. The broom, the security towel, the army hat. What? Honestly, honestly, Bobby Lashley. Look at the freaking guy. He is walking Armageddon. He is a legit. MMA fighter with a 15-2 professional fight record, and you are giving us this crap. This is patronising, awful bollocks. Can I make a bold prediction? I'm going to make a very bold prediction now. Oh, I mean, I might pick the wrong guy here, but here's my bold prediction. Kane is going to come back to the show, and he's going to be carrying these items. He's going to come out like Bobby Lashley's going to have a match, and then Kane will come out on the stage with the with a broom. Like, and like snap it over his knee or something and then the next week he'll come out with a towel and set the towel on fire or something along these lines trying to play mind games with Bobby Lashley apparently Kane was backstage at Backlash was he really? but that could just be you know yeah. saying hi to folks I at the, my worry there, is there has to be a reason for this I'm just saying there has to be a reason for this right and there should be 
because if this is just a way to make us care and get invested into Bobby Lashley's Fail. character, ultimate mission fail. F. This was an atrocious segment. It made me actively think Bobby Lashley was lame. Mission Why would you do that successful. to one of the most legit people on your roster? And because this does come up a bit, and we talked about it in the Backlash review, where if Roman suddenly miraculously turns heel, no, that does not undo all the bad storytelling and segments you've done in the weeks prior. It's still bad storytelling. It's not like, oh, but it was all because we set up those objects. Fine, set up the objects, but make it interesting. And do it do it better, WWE. Jesus H. Christ. You are not a fan of this segment. It is awful. But, okay, <laughs> apart from Bobby's snappy dress sense, mm -hmm. this does have comedy replay value. Oh, Like, this yeah. is so bad that it's good, but it is also so bad that it's offensive. Like, you saw, were you showing me the image when Bobby Lashley <laughs> did the... He, like, And it was, it's a really, like, tight close-up on his face. His face fills the entirety of the screen. And you did say, it's like, well, this is the easiest Wrestle Ramble thumbnail we've ever had to make. Because that's all we need. And that's true, so there's a positive. We're going to meme it. We're gonna, <laughs> this, this face is a meme. Okay. If, if this isn't on Ross's WTF thumbnail, mm. like he is missing a trick, mate. Swaff Nation, please send us your captions <clears throat> for Bobby Lashley's gormless smile. I love you, my sister's face. This is, this is a combat... This is a simulated combat sport. Where people are meant to fight each other. I don't mind personal stories. Or back I like that sort of stuff. Yeah, the Rod again, the Roddy NXT stuff was excellent and it made Roddy such a better character coming out the back of it. This this really was not that. And as I said, like I'm something has to come out of this because it's so detailed and as you said, like it is sister object story. Like there has to be something within this that is going to play off in Bobby's first storyline. Or are we gonna get another one of these next week where he's gonna talk about his first run, maybe like his run in FCW, or he's gonna talk about um not T in, TNA? In, o in OVW, sorry. TNA? Well, I was going to get to that and then maybe they'll talk about like you know the battle of the billionaires because they did say they like the video package before this that kind of like highlighted his career and like his his um, wrestling background and then he came to WWE through Kurt Angle and he was ECW champion and United States champion and he quote unquote main evented Wrestlemania I was so, I was like well, they're finally doing it they're giving us this video package we're going to get the interview Kudos, WWE, and then that lovely video package ends. Yep, and then we'll get that So I wonder if we're going to get, like, the you know, these next couple of weeks, we're going to, like, recap a lot of his career. But the problem is, that sounds all well and good, but if it's anything like this, it'll be dreadful because Bobby's not being interviewed. Bobby is rehearsing lines and repeating them back to a camera. Like, it, it, so nothing about this seems real or genuine. In what possible world did they think this would get Bobby Lashley over? This this just, I I can't I can't I can't. Mate, this is a company that la on Sunday night put Roman Reigns versus Samoa Joe on last with the idea that because Joe was wrestling a boring match, people would boo Joe and cheer Roman. Let's get like, on with that, the whole. That, that's how it works. Let's get on with the whole review. Haha! <laughs> <laughs> it's a raw review, looking jacked, man. You suck. <laughs> you suck. Cut Angle's opening the show <laughs> with a raw promo. Hi, Ollie um, here. Paige here. Page Ollie here. here. Great, great, great stuff there. I hope, well, I hope that actually cropped me out of the image because if I'm just there still on screen <laughs> doing that, it's not yeah. as impressive. So Kurt Angle opened the show with his floppy wrists. He's excited, Luke. He's very excited because Backlash is out of the way, which means we can look forward to another pay-per-view now. And that mm. pay-per-view is Money in the Bank and we've got six weeks worth of bill to mess it all up. <laughs> uh, well, I, I did appreciate how this episode of Raw structured itself around the pay-per-view in six weeks' time. Yep. All the wrestlers and storylines were based off, I want to get in the match so I can win the briefcase. And I hope they that isn't just a, a one-week thing and they forget about it, or it's just after... It's just until the qualifying matches are over. I, I hope this can run over three to four weeks. Yes, I agree. Uh, but, um, yeah, that was good. Shout out to the lad who had a sign as well that said, uh, Comic Sans, greater than Times New Roman, which I thought was... It's like an extra little dig in there, which I thought was nice. A troll. But my other one was a lad that was just next to him that had, um, you know, the uh, the mocking SpongeBob meme? Um, the it just, Patrick. Uh, no, it's without the Patrick one, it's just the SpongeBob one where he sort of bent over with the sort of silly face. And it just says, this is my yard really nice. made me laugh strong sign game strong sign in game Long from the Island. front row 
There was also a Braun Strowman with an Infinity Gauntlet. Yes, which was really yeah, so really get good. These hands. So um, Long Island, New York. That's where um, that's where Zack Ryder's from. Um, was he on this show at all? He was in a backstage segment. <laughs> oh, of course. Yeah. 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 Uh, the uh, I thought Kurt Angle sounded a bit like Trump here. Oh yeah? yeah, and you. I, I was going to make this jump, this joke in my news, but you do a better re- a impression. <laughs> oh, just, have, I, have I done the Trump impression on here? I, I don't even... know, but Kurt, <laughs> Kurt the old was movie just like podcast. Kurt was like saying that WWE is so great. <laughs> we never stop. We, you know, we just keep on going. I give you the best matches, the best matches. I just... got the best matches better than anyone else in the matches. <laughs> we have the best matches. I oh, say that's not that great. We have the best matches here. The best matches you will ever see in a wrestling promotion. Okay. Something I mean, you mind. turned into South Park at the end there. <laughs> uh, so Braun interrupted this and came out and he said, well, I should be in one of these Money in the Bank qualifying matches. And then I don't know how he transitioned into this. This was a bad segue, if there was one yeah, at all. Yeah, absolutely. And Braun told his own childhood anecdote about when all the kids in the, I don't know, flaming pits of hell that he grew up in <laughs> were making a treehouse and... And they all went to play in it without him. Yeah, it was, he essentially told the No Homers Club story, mm. which is a, tell from the, a story from The Simpsons when Homer wasn't allowed to j- join his friend's treehouse because it was a No Homer Club or No Homers Club. But then another kid called Homer was in there because it's No Homers. We're allowed to have one. Nice. And that's basically what the story that Braun was telling here. And so Braun, and because it's Braun's voice as well, it's just like, there was these kids who built a treehouse and I wanted to be in that treehouse. So you know what I did? I tipped up the whole tree. It was just like, it, again, it was really, cause it was like, you know, here's the setup line. And then Kurt was there to give like the, so what did you do, Braun? Well, I, I thought it was it was quite well structured because that first bit when he's telling the story really clunkily, I was like, oh, God, <clears throat> this this could be the suffering succotash line for Braun. But then Kurt says, "Oh, and let me, um, you know what I was thinking. Let let me guess. You you trashed the the the, the treehouse." Mm. And then Braun goes, "No, I tipped over the tree with them all inside." <laughs> and that, I was like, "You have completely won me over with this story. I thought this was ridiculous. <laughs> it's still definitely ridiculous, but in a great way." But it like, was it though? Because like, it didn't tie into anything, really. It's not like he he basically was just like, "I tipped over a treehouse." And I'm also going to win money in the bank. Like, yeah. <laughs> a really, neither of those things match. And well, there's, just, a, there's a height element. You've got to climb up. Cool. Cool I, story, bro. But like, it didn't really work. I mean, we've only watched this episode of Raw once. And we, we've watched them multiple times, don't we? We've got <laughs> great, great with, re-watching value oh, WWE TV yeah, has. We watch these things with such meticulous mm. detail. We remember who won out of the Braun Strowman uh, Big Show cage match. So I, I don't... I really can't remember how this related to anything. I was just so shocked by the the kind of admission of manslaughter yep. that Braun says at the end. But anyway, uh, Angle says that he does deserve a shot at Money in the Bank, and then uh, this brought out Kevin Owens, uh, who said that he instead deserves to be in Money in the Bank because he was screwed at Backlash. He wasn't the legal man uh, when he was pinned, and says that he's the real MVP of Raw, mm. and he wants to be in the Money in the Bank match instead. And uh, my favourite bit of this, though, was when he got like onto the apron, and then Braun went to threaten him and said, like, if you want to get Money in the Bank, you're going to have to get these hands. And Kevin Owens just backed up saying, like, I don't want your stupid catchphrases. Yeah. Really get, good. Owens is so good at little bits like that. And he also said, you're a bad monster. Very, Very bad, bad monster. monster. Yeah. Uh, and th- this all, obviously, obviously you can see where this is going. Angle books a match, which is Braun Strowman versus Kevin Owens. And it's a qualifying match for Money in the Bank. Uh, Angle said, ironically, you're going to face Braun Strowman. That's not, I- it's not ironic as far as I understand the word. No. It's like rain on your wedding day. This is just unlucky. <laughs> it's like 10,000 spoons yes. and all you need is a knife. Uh, so this transitioned into Braun Strowman versus Kevin Owens. Interestingly, from that promo as well, mm. um, Kevin Owens brought up again his relationship with Stephanie McMahon. I'm just, oh, yeah. I'm just wondering if that's going to play into anything. Yeah, because Kurt said, oh, like, thanks for reminding me that yeah. Stephanie's watching. Uh, so Braun Strowman took on Kevin Owens in what I thought was actually a very good match. Yeah, this I, I actually really enjoyed this match. Yeah. I know I said on yesterday's podcast <laughs> that I was a bit concerned about... Braun as champion because you can only have him in one sort of they've they've been essentially booked him in one sort of match for so long now that you feel like well that's all Braun can do like he squashed the entire tag team division and tagged with a 10 year old and beat the tag champs on his own and then has just squashed Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn for weeks on end but this actually reminded 
me of how good Braun is in singles action and how great it is when you know when people sort of work you know work around him and work around his limitations. How good Braun Strowman is, or how good Kevin Owens is, because I remember a very good match that I personally enjoyed from last year on Raw. Yeah, so it was before the Superstar Shake-Up last year. Kevin Owens and Braun Strowman had a very good match there as well, mm. oh, which was yeah. similarly, it was a similar pattern of Owens kind of using his ring smarts, getting out the way of stuff, uh, targeting legs, yada yada, to, to bring down Strowman. And Can it I made, change my statement then? Uh, uh, how, in, how enjoyable he is to watch. Okay, yeah. And it's it, it worked because sometimes you're like, well, I don't believe that Owens is getting the better of Strowman like the Carmella Charlotte match on Smackdown on, on Backlash oh, it's like come on to that. I don't believe that Carmella is we won't come on to it no we will because there, <laughs> there was a comment on commentary oh was there yeah. that Carmella can dominate Charlotte uh, but here I thought Kevin Owens worked around that well and great frog splash once uh, again yeah. and yeah Braun got the upper hand in the end by the, well there was Kevin Owens tried to do the pop up power bomb <laughs> and Braun just jumped down off the pop-up powerbomb and was like, no, mate, and then <laughs> clobbered him. And that led to the three running charges on the outside. The third one. Oh, I thought oh. the second one was the best. I mean, yeah, the second one was great, but the third one, when he did like a full forward flip bump, was excellent. Well, the first one was, you know, like, Braun Strowman clips them with the side of his shoulder. But the the second one, he just ran straight into him chest first. It yeah, was great. It was great and it got a huge pop as yeah, well. Did, yeah. And running power slam for the win. Good match. Yeah, good match. Very much enjoyed that. Um, backstage, over in here, backstage, some lad interviewed Roman Reigns. I it's think, Mike Rowe. Is that Mike Rowe? That's Mike Rowe. Oh, I've WWE.com's own I've Mike Rowe. I've called him Mike Rowe. Yes. Yeah, I wasn't sure. Um, but he, anyway, so Roman calls himself the uncrowned universal champion. Cuts just one of, another one of his whiny promos, basically. So I'm going to show you a picture here, Luke. Uh-huh. Okay, everyone else is just going to have to paint this picture in their minds. Yeah. This is... The, the shot of the backstage interview. There's mm-hmm. Roman Reigns there, looking about, I would say, a foot taller than Mike, than Mike Rome. Yeah. There is only two inches of difference. Ah, uh, they put him re- on a box. Real. Yeah, a Lovely box. Stuff. Or that is a hell of a squat yeah. from Mike Rome. Because uh, old um, Todd Phillips does the squat yes. very well, doesn't yeah. he, for, for his interview. So we're back to that. Anything to get Roman over. <laughs> <laughs> then we got some... Uh, the, the, throughout the night, there was these phone shot promos. Uh, hyping up money in the bank and why various people can't wait to win it. Bailey had one and Breezango had a funny one. Yeah, and I like this as well because it wasn't just like you'd imagine that it's just going to be your mid carders that are in there, but actually you had people like Breezango and the Ascension cut a promo about possibly winning money in the bank. And I really like that. It's yeah. sort of, like it made it feel almost like the Royal Rumble where it kind of opens up the battlefield. It's like, yeah. hey, like anyone could win the Royal Rumble. Hey, anyone could qualify for money in the bank. You don't know who's going to be in there. So I, 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 really, I really enjoyed that aspect of it. It's. I don't know how they're going to do this. I think they'll have a battle royal for the final spot. Well, I was I was thinking more in terms of does okay. Raw get four places? Yes, does they Smackdown? said that on commentary. Oh, they yeah. did, did they? Sorry. Yeah. They yeah, so announced on commentary that each match will have eight people, four from each brand. It'd be really nice to have seven proper upper carders and then one guy like like a Fandango or a yeah. Tyler Breeze cause you, or a Chad Gable because you could make someone just using that match absolutely that absolutely you could it wasn't just the phone promos a lot of people were coming into Kurt Angle's office to say why they should get qualifying matches in this case it was gold dust yeah okay so gold dust came in and said that he wants to be in a qualifying match um and he does his movie quote stick and then Jinder walks in and says that he deserves to be in the triple threat match uh, instead of you know whoever you know because the, the triple threat main event was going to be Roman Reigns versus Finn Balor versus Sami Zayn the winner get, qualifies for money in the bank so Jinder said he should be in that triple threat match um, and Angle says well I mean you haven't won a match since you've come to Raw so you're not really on that much of a roll are you uh, and you're going to be facing Chad Gable tonight and if you put in a good performance I'll consider putting you into a money in the bank qualifier Golda then says another movie quote and walks out and I was like yeah but you didn't get an answer like you literally walked in and said can I be in a match Kurt Angle got distracted by something else and then he was like cool bro okay I'm, then I'm off and it's again it's just like it's it's when you script things too much and then at the end of it you're like actually that doesn't make any sense anymore this exact thing happened to Zack Ryder later on yeah didn't get an answer either just like oh you said my catchphrase wait does that mean I'm in a match <laughs> <laughs> That'd be funnier if they held on these comedy undercarders or lower carders, yeah. whatever they're called. Uh, I also, 
the the reasoning that Jinder hasn't won enough matches. Do you know what Ke- Kevin Owens' record is for TV matches and pay per view matches this year? I do not. It's one one, uh, lost twelve. Wow. Yeah. Ouch. So uh, yeah, we had that. Uh, but I do like how everyone's gunning for the Money in the Bank yes. places. Then we got Baron Corbin and the Revival taking on. Your fa- oh, mate, your oh, favourite, right. your absolute favourite. And No Way Jose. Yeah, you bloody love No Way Jose, don't you? My first note is your mm. revival are too good for this position. Oh, Poor yeah, lad. Say that again. Got the jobber entrance. Um, this, <laughs> I've also written, this is the most wrestling No Way Jose has done on the main roster, which I'm mm. almost certain is true. Uh, Corbin blind tagged himself in and hit the end of days on No Way for the win. I thought it was a fun six-man tag, yeah. though. I yeah, thought it was actually it was, a really fun match. It was a, it was a, a very fun match. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. And it went five minutes. Yeah. Did you hear Corey Graves' description of No Way Jose, who was wearing these fluorescent green bottoms? You could call him a highlighter. A human highlighter. A human highlighter, yeah. yeah. It was funny. But then it was like all the Money in the Bank matches were really good because next up, that, because that six man was not for anything apart from furthering the Baron Corbin No Way Jose feud that we're so into. But the commentators were also saying, it's like, oh, you know, a big win mm. here. Maybe that, you know, Kurt Angle's going to be watching this. Maybe they could be put into a Money in the Bank qualifier again. Again, making like every single match about qualifying yeah. for Money in the Bank, even if it wasn't a qualifier. But the next match was a qualifier and it was really good. Oh, it's interesting. Oh, I, did you not like Well, it? no, I thought it was good. But I thought it had like a really great start, and then it really oh. fell apart when Ruby was just doing chin locks for what in seemed the like yeah, what okay. seemed like ages. It was just it was a really great start and end, and but it was also one of those matches as well where Ember Moon was clearly going to win because she was dominated throughout the match uh, and then got the 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 win at the end. Um, I really didn't I really didn't mind it. Well, but I, I did think though that it was. It was good. Mm. I just thought that the middle was very, very saggy. So this was Ember Moon beating Ruby Riot and Sasha Banks. It's boss time. We- oh my god! When he said Michael Cole said that, I just I've written it there. It's yeah. boss time. It's boss time, man. Yeah. I thought Ruby Riot was actually the standout. She there. was great. Uh, really there was good. a particular moment when she was beating up Sasha Banks, and she did the uh, when she's on the, ter- the top turnbuckle, and she gets Sasha's head between her legs and drives it into the, the second turnbuckle. A move that Coachman said was the most innovative move he's ever seen. Mate, you want to watch? Do you want to watch Buddy Murphy's finish on Two Hundred Five Live? So, Coachman's commentary here. There's, so the story of the match was Moon, Riot and Banks That Moon got chucked out early and it was just Riot and Banks Who were working together really well I really do like both of them It's just a shame they've been booked into oblivion essentially And then because it's triple threat Rules, no DQ The Riot squad get involved a lot Yeah. Why wouldn't they do that from the start It's by the by, that's wrestling You can put that to one side And then Bailey runs down Bailey runs down to help Sasha Banks, and this was quite good. Even though I gave up on this a few days ago, the kind of resigned "I'm helping you out, Sasha," yada yada yada. But then Coachman just says, "Let it go, let, let it, it go. go," and he said it twice. And then Corey was like, "You're watching Frozen over there." It was it just came out of nowhere. It was so weird, and it's got to the point, guys, where I don't find Coachman laughably bad anymore. Oh, I just no. find him infuriating. I, I still quite like the word of the hour no. shtick. I think that, that that amuses me. But I, the- I, I feel like Backlash was a real watershed moment <laughs> for my fandom this year, where yeah. I just all the things that I was kind of like getting along with, or like oh, that's quite endearingly bad. I, I actively hate the next day. <laughs> But um, this was also the match where they had. I'm pretty sure it was in this match where they had a commentary line that was just wanted just just to underline the pointlessness and awfulness of backlash at times. Pointlessness is the wrong word, but awfulness certainly is the right word. When they essentially said like they were put, putting over how important it is to win Money in the Bank. It's like I mean, look what it did for Carmella, and what a great showing she had against Charlotte yesterday, really proving her own. I'm like, mate, that wasn't the bloody storyline you were telling going into that match. Why is this now the storyline? Mm. And it was just It was a complete 180 change of character On a whim Just like Oh all of a sudden Now Carmella's brilliant By the way She's an excellent wrestler We just haven't been She just hasn't been Showing it for whatever reason Yeah yeah. Which And it really really annoyed me But I You know I thought this match Was actually quite good Out of you know In the vacuum But uh And I You know You said that Ruby Wright Was also Was really great I thought she was Absolutely terrific In this match And there was a really nice um, Sort of Hurricane Rana Off the top rope Yes That was rolled through Into the Yes into the that was really bomb. good Really cool And that's when The Riot Squad got involved Yeah and then you're right And then uh, Bailey got involved in the end to kind of help Banks because that storyline must continue. I'm pretty sure it started in 2016. I think they, they yeah, started doing well, teasing. Yeah, 
And this isn't this isn't Randy Savage, Hulk Hogan, <laughs> no. and Le- Elizabeth. <laughs> the mega powers explode. No. This, <laughs> this isn't a well-told story over a long period. It's uh... yeah. And then uh, Riot had uh, well, Banks was about to get right into the bank statement, and then uh, Moon came off the top with an eclipse onto well onto Ruby Riot, but it sort of knocked Banks out of the ring, and she won the match. So yeah, really em- cool finish. Really cool finish. But Emma was dominated throughout the match, and then uh, Charlie Caruso interviewed her back. Was it Charlie Caruso? I mean, it's yeah, one, it's of, one them. of them. Interviewed her backstage, and she had her own suffering succotash line when she asked, like, "What did you think of that?" When she said, "I'm over the moon." You get it because her name is Ember Moon, and she has a moon in her Titantron. Yeah, uh, it's it's terrible. Yeah, it's terrible. Why would you like? That's like, okay, I'm trying I'm trying to write something for the promo. Okay, I'll just write down some crap ideas just to get me going, just so the obvious stuff is out of my head and on the page, and I can come up with something better. But they just they went with that first one. Yep, first the draft. most obvious horrible thing it makes Ember look bad. She looks lame. She's meant to be like a cool. I still don't really know what her character is. I like her wrestling. Uh, and her gear is really cool. I, She's got an excellent look. Mm. Um, but at that point, I thought, hmm, I think I'm over this moon. Yeah. Yeah. I'm it's starting to lose interest. If, and if, if she starts doing crap like that, I'm going to lose interest. And there was a weird bit where she seemed to stumble over her last line, which is like, and I will rise. And then she paused and restarted the line. I will rise to winning the money in the bank contract. Well, it's because she has to rise like a moon again, because I, her character is she's a moon, I think. Um <laughs> <laughs> And she's going to rise like one to win money. This is what happens when you give people scripted dialogue. Just give them bullet points and let them make up their own nonsense. What what a terrific character. Someone submit that to crap gimmicks. What, the I'm a moon? No, just a... Yeah, the gimmick is they're a moon. <laughs> they're... I don't know Orbiting how... Orbiting around other wrestlers. Develop it. Develop it for us. <laughs> I like how we're outsourcing a lot of the stuff these days. Meme. Meme captions for Bobby Lashley's face. Jingles. Jingles. Send us in jingles. Absolutely. So after that, hot off the momentum of the over-the-moon pun, we got the aforementioned Bobby Lashley interview. Yep. And then we get more dissent from Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens. Joy, because apparently we can't have nice things like mm. them being a team. Um, yeah, they. Sammy was like, "Look, it's really important that one of us gets to into the Money Bank and one of us becomes the Universal Champion." But Kevin seemed pretty upset about all of this um, because Sammy had slapped him at the uh, the pay per view and, and fed him to Braun Strowman. And fed him yeah. to Braun Strowman, yeah. And uh, eventually, Kevin walked. Oh, because Sammy was getting him to say "yep" because he was only saying "yes," and when he wouldn't say he wouldn't say "yep," he just said "yes" and he walked off. It's a real shame because this isn't the story they should be telling when this is an open goal of booking. They're both so good as ridiculously over-the-top friends. But it's also like you see this. They, Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens are putting in excellent performances here. Sami Zayn's kind of conspiratorial, they're out to get us, shaking nut thing is, is really good. And Owens is a, a great performer himself it's like imagine if they had something good to do <laughs> just imagine they had something good to do it's almost as if this tag team division could do with a like another really cool tag team because when well, we've got some really good tag teams in this division mm. but it like you know the deleter of worlds don't have a feud at the moment yeah so next up we got that jinder mahal chad gable match that had been set up by kurt earlier in the night uh chad got a few spots but it was mostly all jinder yeah i would say and after gable got a kind of shock victory shock who knows two weeks prior but mahal beat him up before the bell there so i thought that that told quite a nice story uh and i would have definitely gone putting gable over again here but of course, there were bigger plans in store. So Jinder won with a coloss. He certainly did. And then after the match, Sunil Singh was getting in uh, Gable's face. So Gable pushed him out of the way. And then Jinder took ups- uh, exception to that and beat up Chad uh, some more. I've got to be honest, I was expecting a Jason Jordan return. Oh, yeah, because he, he is ready, they yeah, say. Yeah, well, PW Insider said that he would be on the show. Um, Man, that's not the... I mean, reunite an American Alpha... I didn't even think of that for some reason. Yeah. That is not a bad idea at all. Well, and Gable's using their music again. Mm. But uh, I don't know why. It was just like, it's because they were doing the beatdown spot. I was expecting a return. Uh, Alexa Bliss, who's currently injured, did a phone promo for Money in the Bank, as did The Ascension. I thought The Ascension's promo was pretty good. Yes, it was. Yeah. yeah. Uh, not not their comedy stuff, though. Mm, so it's yes. like, where are, what think, are you? Well, is that still going on? I don't know. I don't know. Do they even do the fashion files on WWE.com? 
I don't know. Uh, Zack Ryder, we spoke about it. He was he, he came into Kurt's office and asked for a Money in the Bank match. And Jinder came in off his loss to Chad Gable. And was like, win. Sorry, win to Chad Gable. And said, you know, I should get a Money in the Bank qualifying match now. It should be a fatal four way Yes. Tonight. And Kurt said, woo, woo, no. Because that's Zack's catchphrase. Yeah, it was something along those lines. I think he, I think he did the full woo woo woo. Oh, I'm and sorry. The, I don't want to misquote the guy. Well, I mean, someone will correct you. I just want to, you know, I'm just saving you the embarrassment. Heaven forbid. <laughs> it was something along those lines. But again, yeah, um, he he asked for a spot and then didn't really get an answer. But cool because he used his catchphrase. Yeah. Drew McIntyre and Dolph Ziggler beat Heath Slater and Rhino in two minutes. Yep. Uh, the crowd was super into Heath Slater here. <laughs> yeah. Not a I got kids chance. Well, which He's Rhino, got kids. Rhino was starting. You mm. know, but that's because how, that's how good Rhino is. That he was getting people to chant, I, you know, He's got kids during this match. Rhino? Yeah, Rhino was. He was on the outside starting the oh, chance. Oh, I didn't see that. Yeah. Nice work. You can hear it because he's the loudest person. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but Drew and Dolph are really good. Their, their move sets have, have they really worked hard on integrating their moves into each other's yeah. uh, style, and their double team moves are really good. This time they did that. They've done it before, didn't they? It was mm-hmm. like the, the Alabama slam yeah. into with the super kick into the full slam. But this time, Drew had. Slater yeah, yeah. draped over the top rope and Dolph hit a super kick from the outside. And then they hit their Claymore zigzag, sh- zigzag for the, the finish. Yeah. I mean, I, I think that this is... Um, it's a, I think the tag team is cool. It's the most interesting Dolph has been in, in quite some time. But I'm just so much more into Drew than I am oh, Dolph yeah. in the few. Like, I, I think that like it when Dolph is in the ring, it's it's fine it's, it just feels like a WWE tag team match but as the second Drew steps through the ropes the mood changes and the, the atmosphere of a match changes it's, it's just it's how good Drew is it's particularly in this role I suppose but the, the mood just felt so much so like just another level when he stepped in the ring feels serious yeah that's the best word I can think that's of re- to yeah, describe that's a, it that's really good yeah and, and it's a shame that his serious entrance Oh, that record scratch. Yeah, with a record scratch. I We've mean, I've written enough here, on that. This team is very, very good, but it's all about Drew. Bobby Roode took on Elias for the third week in a row next. Now, of course, Bobby Roode got his larynx crushed on the last match they had just seven days ago. And uh, he's totally fine here. He was fine on Saturday, uh, Sunday night at Backlash. But yep. there was no, not even an inkling of using that injury as part of the match. No, absolutely not. In fact, I'd almost forgotten it happened. Yeah, yeah. Well, there you go. Uh, but before Got an this, idea what the commentary just fell apart <coughs> during this match, and for the uh, yeah, a lot of the night afterwards. Oh man! So Michael Cole was just creaming his pants over the prospect of Elias. Yeah, and I just, I, Michael Cole is not a pleasant voice to listen to on commentary. We, that's you know that's pretty much a platitude by this point but i it, when, when you give him non baby face things to do like being really excited for the obvious heel elias or being down on the obvious baby faces the deleter of worlds it really makes his character just so inconsistent and it makes me not buy into any of the play by play stuff he has to say mm-hmm. it's really damaging to everything overall so why can't you get... I know Corey's gimmick is that he, he hates the Drifter, and that's very consistent from his NXT days. But this is, a, this is a Corey Grave spot to get really excited about Elias. It's fine to... Jerry Lawler used to do it on a dime all the time. As soon as someone turns heel, ah, oh, well, you know, now, now they've changed their ways. I think Corey could easily just have one word of, you know what, this is great, this stuff that he yeah. does now. That, that's far more suited. But what you've got here was Michael Cole doing his horrible over-the-top selling of how great oh, Elias yeah. is. Oh, yeah, he's going to do a concert. Oh, my God, it's going to be great. Right. Yeah. You know, I was really listening to the um, the WrestleMania X7 um, opening promo because we uh, did the, the WrestleMania Lecture episode on it quite recently. And um, that opening promo has, like, w- WWE commentators talking about these great WrestleMania moments. And you hear, like, Gorilla Monsoon, the irresistible force versus the immovable object. You hear Vince McMahon, the boyhood dream has come true for Shawn Michaels. And you have Austin, Austin, the Austin era has begun. And then you got Michael Cole going, like, WrestleMania is the best. And I'm like, oh, God. It was the worst thing about that promo. It made me actually actively hate it. And he was okay back then. <laughs> he is so much. And, you know, it's more. The, the direction he's given. Yeah, it is. Uh, so the, this was the Elias gig. Elias 
did his usual shtick, trashing Long Island, mm-hmm. and Billy Joel. That didn't get much heat. <laughs> no, he, he, he trashed Billy Joel, and everyone was like, "Yeah, okay, cool." <laughs> I mean, yeah, bearing in mind, like the the audience that they tend to cater towards are like you know eight year olds. I mean, how many eight year olds do you know who are mm. super into Billy Joel at the moment? Yeah. Uh, well, they should be <laughs> great solo artist, and uh, they got some Rusev Day chants in there off the the segment that happened the previous night. But he got much better heat for insulting the local sports team. Yeah, I think they're a, like they, he said something that sounded like it should be a local sports, sports team. team. Yep, yeah. I mean they probably do a lot of sports <clears throat> in in Long Island. Uh, and then Bobby came in and they had a match. I thought it was a, a better match than Elias usually has. Yep. It felt like he did more wrestling moves than just usual. That Most of his stuff's based around rest holds. Yes. I, I, the crowd were cheering for other things, but I couldn't quite make out what they were what they were chanting for. That apparently there was a proposal that was during the, in the that, was, that was during the triple threat women's match. And that was, I oh, think, right. one of the other reasons why I think the match sagged a little bit, because the crowd just stopped paying attention to yeah. the match and turned around to, to congratulate the, the, the guy who got married. You know, congratulations, don't do it at a wrestling show during a match, because I think it's a little bit disrespectful. I, but. I can't help but feeling, unless the the fiance is a super wrestling fan that that's those sorts of things are more for the guy maybe yeah i mean like my my uh, my wife would always like before i you know we would talk about like oh if i was going to propose i don't think she would have minded if i'd done it in a public place i think she didn't want me to do it in front of family because that would have been very embarrassing but I, I i just wanted it to be the two of us but i've seen you know proposals at like kevin smith shows where i sort of feel like oh, i wonder if that is Who's this for? Who's this for? Who's this, this for? for? And this very much feels and might be one of those. Who's this for? Yeah. But um, yeah, you know, but you could, uh, the crowd were disinter- disinterested in this match as well. You could ask that question about a lot of WWE booking. <laughs> who is who's this, this for? for? That, that Bobby Lashley segment. Who's this for? Uh, so I yeah, I liked the Elias. That so Rude had a running bulldog, and Elias turned that into a backbreaker. I thought that was quite good. Mm-hmm. And the the crash larynx spot did kind of play into it when. Bobby blocked himself being thrown into the ring post again, but that was all it was. Yeah. And then Rude wins on the third time after Elias had been him clean in two previous occasions. And he was like, now I want to be added to the Money in the Bank match because that would be, guess what he said? Guess what adjective he used? Delightful. Yeah. yeah. Seth Rollins took on, well, we should start from the beginning so we can have the crazy reveal of who answered the challenge first Mm -hmm. so opening this segment Seth Rollins came out for a promo god he's good he is really good and the crowd love him at the moment absolutely he's really good but Corey Graves said on commentary many people are saying Seth Rollins versus The Miz is a match of the year candidate (laughs) no it's not I mean it was the best match on that card but it was a very low bar that they had to vault over like no, absolutely not. If that is, if that, I mean, it will probably be on, um, you know, when WWE release at the end of the, on the network at the end of the year, it will probably be on that, but no way is that going to be a match of the year contender. Yeah. It's, it, it'll be lucky. So in the larger world of wrestling, that's not even in the top 10 of this month. No. Uh, maybe in WWE, it'll be top five. I don't know. But yeah, seriously. <laughs> <coughs> Mate. Corey Graves is the one with the most credibility. Uh, so Seth does an in-ring promo yep. and he says that he wants to make the Intercontinental title the top title on Raw which yeah. kind of needs to I because mean, it has to be Brock isn't around them that much and he says he wants to be a fighting champion unlike The Miz who he beat at Backlash so he issues an open challenge oh, John um, Cena style but we've said this uh, on a few times now after the, the great stuff that Cena did with the United States Championship when he did his, his US Open challenge every week and essentially was John Cena's new gimmick he, is he has the best match on TV every week and a new guy comes in and he has a really really good match a three and a half four star match with each person that comes into the ring lovely stuff it made for great television each and every week and ever since then when they've done these teasers like AJ Styles did it with the United I was like oh brilliant now AJ Styles can have the best match on TV every week we thought that Roman might be doing it with the Intercontinental I was like oh brilliant now Roman can have the best match on TV each and every week and none of them have ever done it they've done it once and then that's it and then they've gone on into different storylines so this time Maybe it's just I'm, I'm getting my hopes up, but hopefully this time it sticks, and so, and Rollins just gets to have the best match on TV each and every week. That'd be lovely. Well, he he would, regardless, I think. Mm-hmm. It, but this really 
has a you can build a storyline around yeah, it. Yeah, you can bring up people from NXT for one yeah. one shows and oh, things like that. strong. Set yeah, violence. exactly. Like you know, you, and that's what the, was great about the the John uh, John Cena one when you had Kevin Owens coming, you had Sami Zayn come up, and you had all these people that were just like coming out of the woodwork to be like, hey, let's let's have a show stealing match, let's have a star making match, and and actually, you know, the the match that we had here, I thought was one of those matches, and I, I really really enjoyed the whole like this from start to end. I really enjoyed. As I said, I just hope they can do it again next week and the weeks following to build into a new storyline I totally agree because it, it appears is one with Finn Balor's not happening now yeah so this was uh, answered by Monday Night Rawley it's Mojo Rawley people yeah uh, he cut a good promo on the way down to the ring but not as intense and fiery as, as we know he can be but I thought he carried himself as a good heel here particularly because the crowd wanted it to be Zack Ryder yes well, that would have been I guess that's why they did it because of their history. Yeah, I didn't think of that actually. And Joe Joe does the proper intros, like uh, it's a, a proper title bout, you know, yeah. in the left corner or whatever. Uh, here, I was Mojo Rawley is a deceptively big guy mm. because what Seth Rollins is big and he is toned, but Mojo Rawley because he lacks a bit of definition, I sometimes see him as a bit shorter or maybe. But standing alongside Rollins, he is to use an internet term thick isn't he <laughs> with two he's, c's yeah with two c's he's he's wider he's a little bit taller he's just like he's the same but larger yeah and not was, fat or, or anything like no. that just but he's a bigger human being and it was i i was surprised by how big he actually is and if we want to talk about graves further losing credibility uh with us here at wrestle talk yeah he tried to claim that mojo really gained some ground on smackdown what did he accomplish what did he do on smackdown he gave pep talks to kids. And he had that very, very small feud with Zack Ryder. Mm. Like, I'm not sure that he really gained any ground on SmackDown. It was barely on TV. Corey has been good. Hopefully this is just a, a blip here. But uh, this, like you said, was a good match. Yeah. Uh, Seth were, hits double dives. That was the real fire-up part. Mojo looked good. Well, that, that's it. And that's what makes this match so yeah. good, is that Seth's role in this match was not just... Hey, we need to like you know put on a really good match. It was like I let's give you some really big moments to elevate you in in defeat. Mm. It was so Mojo came out of this match, although he lost, looking so much better than he did before he went into this match. And that is the that's a really that's how great Rollins is. And uh, you know, and then credit to Mojo as well. I thought Mojo was really really strong in this match. And I just, yeah, I hope they can do this again next week. And hopefully Mojo gets something out of this. Thumbs up all round. Thumbs up. Then we got Finn Balor cutting a mobile phone promo. Yep. About smiling. I have, I've, li I've written the exact same words that you have. Finn I mean, Balor cuts a cell was. phone promo about smiling. Yeah. And you, what did it, it was like, you'll be smiling too if <laughs> you never got your Universal Championship automatic I rematch I was just clause. Because so, the first thing was like, do you want to know why I'm smiling? Mm. And I was like, yes, actually, I do. Because you do it all the time. Uh, after this, we got Bo Dallas and Curtis Axel. No longer Ms. Taraji. No. They have, uh, they've split from that. They've broken out of their roles to have new leading roles. Yeah, they cut an inset promo to say that like they're no longer the Ms. Taraji. They're no longer supporting actors. And they're going to reveal their new tag team name, which they didn't do uh, in, in this match. And they had the line, turn us on and turn us loose. Mm-hmm. I uh, actually quite enjoyed this because it end, that ends with um, they were like we're going to announce a new tag team stay tuned eh? Eh? which is I think their new gimmick now mm. which led Coachman to believe that their new tag team name is stay tuned eh? 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 Uh, yeah this was uh, the, the commentary was awful for this match <clears throat> it was Bo Dallas and Curtis Axel whatever they're called versus the deleter the deleters of Welds Woken Matt Hardy and Bray Wyatt and it was just Cole and Graves bickering over Bray Wyatt's new essence of Samuel or Samuel, however you say it, it was it was it was awful. It, it was, was awful yeah, to listen really to. And 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 I don't blame <clears throat> Matt or Bray in any of this, but the commentary makes me want them not to be on TV anymore because yeah. I I can't having this every week is it's just so draining. It's so draining to hear Michael Cole talk about 
It's like, oh, and some bald guy's having a go at me on Twitter, and then Curry goes, goes that senior Benjamin, show some respect. It's the same crap every single week. It's really, it's so demoralizing. It makes me want to just, it, it, act, as I said, it actively makes me them not, want mm-hmm. them not to be on TV, just the, the, so I can avoid the commentary. And the commentators are so important yeah. for, for getting over the product and, and being credible, and that, yeah, this is awful. It's so bad. But they've got a new version of the Sister Abigail. Yeah. I feel like they've. this is like the third attempt of trying to make a double team team move whereas Drew McIntyre and Dolph Ziggler have like move double team moves to spare Bray and Matt are still struggling on this one yeah they, they really are yeah not not gelling as a, as a mm. tag team they have some spots that are quite good but I thought this was this was the best they've had this yeah. was easily the best one they just do it side by side and yeah. do the move together uh, then we got Natalia cutting a mobile phone promo it was rubbish and yeah she said it was an honour to compete in the first women's money in the bank and she knows what it takes to win I was like but you lost twice mm. so I don't think you do know what it takes to win you know who does know what it takes to win though Baron Corbin, who had the next promo, who said, well, I won the Money in the Bank match last year and I'm going to win it again this year. And I was like, oh, my God, (laughs) you did win it last year. I completely forgot that happened. Oh, mate, do you know what I forgot as well? When uh, during the Mojo match, they mentioned that Mojo Riley won the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal. And I paused. I was like, no, he didn't. Jinder won it. (laughs) <laughs> and I was the a, Gronk one. And I was about to write that now. I was like, I'm pretty sure Jinder won that match. And then I was, I was like, I was like, no way, did Mojo win it? I honestly can't remember now. Mm. And then obviously I remembered the promo with the the kids when he was like carting the trophy around to all of the arenas that he was going to. So the main event was Finn Balor beating Roman Reigns and Sami Zayn. But let's be honest, more Sami Zayn for a place in the Money in the Bank ladder match. And this was a a really fun good match really well structured where the crowd was super into Sammy and Finn teaming together to beat up Roman Reigns okay so I found this very interesting this mm. match because you're absolutely right the Roman was absolutely booed out the building and the crowd were chanting same old S at him because he was dominating Finn and Sammy right at the start of the match and the fans were not into that and then Finn and Sammy came together and they beat him up and the crowd erupted into cheers being like hey and then they dragged Roman into the outside they brawled through the crowd and they beat them up out there any time Roman got a little bit of offense in boo crowd were like just like so hot and into this match and specifically into hating on Roman and cheering whenever Finn and Sammy were beating each beating up uh, Roman and then eventually Sammy uh, hits a halluva kick and he falls into the technical area and Bala gets up and he hits the coup de grace crowd erupt into like absolute madness then Finn and Sammy get into the ring and the crowd dies and the crowd weren't in so much until Roman got back and the crowd Uh, started booing it again I didn't notice that yeah, the uh, crowd felt really quiet when it was just uh, Sammy and Finn. Which oh, I, thought, I really enjoyed the Sammy and Finn it was, stuff. It was Maybe great. that's why I didn't notice yeah, it. it. Was, it was great. It was really, really good stuff. But the crowd were more into them beating up Roman and, that, and booing Roman. That's not strictly true. Because I've got here, Sammy when Sammy gets Finn into the ring, like Ole chants start. Yeah, but that's like right at the start. And then it's the longer, oh, then the longer they wrestled, out. it just petered out. Ah. And anyway, I was really surprised because I thought the, the fans would be more into that. But yeah, they weren't. Yeah. A reaction is worse than no reaction in yeah, these. Yeah, pretty much in this uh, case. So Finn and Seth, uh, like you said, that Finn and Seth, Finn and uh, Sammy, Sammy. There we go. Got there. Are, are having a really good back and forth, and then Sammy goes to hit something. Or, no, or is it Ballard goes to hit something in the barricade area? Someone tries to hit something, but Roman Reigns flies out and takes them out. And you could hear you knew Roman was coming because you could hear the crowd started to boo. Yeah. Also, the, the commentators aren't reacting to it because they only watch the monitors. Um, and then like Roman dives out and they're like, oh, "Where did he come from?" It's like, "If you listen, mate, you'd have heard him." Mm. But um, uh, yeah, and then uh, they had some more back and forth sort of stuff good uh, back and forth good, this was good, a good back match. and forth really actually, good I really, yeah, I, yeah. I've, I've, I've sat like I'm down in it but I actually really enjoyed it and then the finish saw Roman was he hit, a, hit the Superman punch on Finn and um, you know he's about to set up for the spear and then from out of nowhere Jinder Mahal jumps the barricade and he trips Roman Reigns Roman Reigns falls flat on his face and as he stands up Sammy hits the halluva kick and then from out of nowhere Finn hits the shotgun drop kick and the coup de grace and he wins to qualify for Money in the Bank so it's him and Braun Strowman pinning so Sammy far. yes pinning Sammy yeah so it's him and Braun Strowman uh, in the raw men's well from the raw side of things for the men's Money in the Bank but more 
depressingly, it appears we are setting up for a Roman gender feud on Raw. Ho ho ho! Steady on, WWE. You do give us what we want sometimes. Ho ho ho! Oh, it's not promising because, I mean, that's the main event program, right? That I mean, it, totally, yeah. yeah. Well, because it's Roman, yeah, so it'll be the main event program. And and it's you, you, we thought, well, WWE, they tried the gender experiment. It did. It, it failed quite astoundingly. But then, like, they put him back into a, a mid-card area where he is so much better suited. This is perfect role for him. But now it was just... We we let our guard down, Luke, well, we, because Vince yeah. has put Jinder right back into that main event program. It is two Vince McMahon pet projects against each other, and good God, I hope they don't go the foreign heel route. Well, I, well, I think it's more. Oh yeah, I mean, the, the, when he won the United States Championship, I remember Dave Meltzer and Brian Alvarez saying, like, "Ah, oh, man, it's the one thing we like." I the one thing they never tried with Roman, the American hero, Roman Reigns. And that was like why he won the United States Championship, so he could be this American hero as a way to get people to cheer him. And yeah, and it's now I've just suddenly realized that, that that's what this feud is designed to do because people don't like gender. So the theory is, I'm assuming, I mean, they don't like gender. So that means they'll cheer Roman Reigns because Roman is beating up gender. Well, right? they, they cheered gender here yeah. when he tripped Reigns. Uh, the yeah. only other interesting thing is... Zayn earlier in the night in their backstage segment said to Owens, you know, it's triple threat rules. Come out and help me. No disqualification. Owens did not come to help Zayn. No. One one moment in this. So it, will that play into the dissension that's not needed next week? I don't know. It's There is very little to be excited about on Raw right now. I guess the money in the bank stuff is 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 well structured and the Seth Rollins stuff is very good. But this is a three hour show. Reigns and Jinder, uh, the Baron Corbin, No Way Jose filler, whatever's going on with the tag team division, well, no, which is nothing. Um, where's it, where's Bobby yeah. freaking Lashley, family man. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And the Bobby Roode um, Elias feud that's going nowhere. Authors of Pain haven't been on TV for. I, I mean, were they on TV last week? I think they were. They beat up some. Um, oh, it was in Montreal. Yeah, yes. Montreal jobbers. Yeah, but like, I think that's what. I think Raw needs the moment. They need some a tag team something to happen because there's nothing happening within the tag team division at the moment. The mid card scene's very bland, and but the only thing I'm excited about is Money in the Bank. But that's only because more I, I really like Money in the Bank as as a pay per view, and I liked that the show was structured around that. But yeah, I, I completely agree with uh, with you. Outside of Seth, hopefully having an actual invitational every single week, so we can get some some good matches on TV. It's not a great deal to be excited about. What uh, what would you give it out of five? <sighs> I think I'd have gone a two because you gave it a poor, didn't I you? I gave it a poor. Yeah, yeah, I think I probably would have gone the same. Uh, yeah, okay. Well, because it, it was good wrestling. We, we got some good wrestling matches and the Money in the Bank stuff. So it wasn't a flat out bore. But there's a lot of stuff on this show I really didn't like. Yeah. But that's all we've got time for today. Please click the videos that have just appeared on our laps to catch up with the latest Wrestle Talk videos. Subscribe to this channel. Pledge on Patreon. Become a pledge hammer to get access to exclusive content and this podcast button here for exclusive intros and outros. It's all free. This one you should do it on iTunes or wherever you get your podcasts from. I've been Ollie Davis. This has been Luke Owen, and that was rambling.